Welcome back to Melanie Loves Death Metal. I've got kind of a sombering, a little bit of a sad video today. Uh, I'm trying not to make it too sad though. Uh, clearly it is about the Black Dahlia murder. I'm going to show off my collection, talk through every single album. I guess reviewing every album, if you want to call it that. So uh, a couple weeks ago, about two, almost a month now, Trevor Stranad, 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 I don't ever say it correctly. Uh, passed away. He was the lead singer and the main f main guy behind the Black Dahlia murder. Uh, pretty much the true underground metal ambassador that everybody uh, loved in the scene for the most part. Um, I mean, that knew him or knew of him or were a fan of him. He was a, a very vibrant personality. Um, he was an incredible front man on stage, just absolute madman. Such a fun show to go to. Uh, and was probably one of my favorite artists and one of my, uh, I guess you could say, people that if I had ever met in person, I probably would have been starstruck and just nervous. <laughs> and I don't have a whole lot of those, especially like within the death metal scene. So the Black Diameter has been one of my favorite bands for a very, very long time. Um, ever since I heard Unhallowed, which is pretty much the story that you're going to get from a lot of people that love the Black Dahlia murder. So, um, his passing has, has definitely been challenging, uh, to deal with for a lot of people, um, especially obviously family and friends, uh, and bandmates and, and people that were a lot closer to him. Uh, but for the scene and for the people that again, were big fans and, and had, small interactions with him it has been a devastating loss to say the least so for me personally trevor has communicated with me a couple of times on instagram and twitter especially when he learned about my youtube channel and what i had been doing for the underground death metal scene he was very involved with the underground scene he he loved he loved promoting it. He was consistently on Bandcamp and sharing links on Twitter and telling people to listen to this to this music, especially a lot of these underground labels that I've talked about on this channel. So we definitely connected through that, which is funny considering uh, how much of a big fan I was of his band uh, and to the point of where I created a subreddit um, on Reddit because uh, the R Metal subreddit pretty much blacklisted anybody talking about Black Dahlia murder on there because they was just getting flooded nonstop um, from people making posts about the band because again they have a very loyal fan base very large fan base uh, so they were one of those blacklisted bands I was like hey stop stop spamming the crap out of this subreddit with Black Dahlia murder like let's talk about other bands on here uh, and because of that several years ago, nine years ago, I think now, um, I created a subreddit just for the Black Dahlia murder for fans to go and talk about the band and share videos and share reviews and talk about the new album that was coming out, which at the time was Ever Black. Uh, and in that community, which is now over 2,000 members, uh, I met a lot of amazing people. I met a lot of awesome Black Dahlia murder fans and a lot of death metal fans in general. And I've kept in contact with several of those people these last nine years. We've met in person. We've gone to concerts together. We've, we've become good friends. And because of the Black Dahlia murder, I've connected with people on the internet and I've made a solid friendship with these people and that is what makes music so powerful is that you're able to do those types of things and, and absolutely why I love music. Um, throughout those last nine years I've obviously definitely strayed very far from Reddit. I'm not nearly as active on there and I have not done anything on there in a very long time but the community is still active people still actively post on there and it makes me really happy to see that uh since since that time i've moved over more to instagram as you know and youtube uh, and facebook has a very large blast beans uh community over there that is consistent daily and i've been active in there not as not as much recently uh but i've, I've gone over there and i've talked to people on there a lot um and most notably uh kareem from Night Shift Merch, who was active on that community as well, which is why I'm familiar with him, uh, collaborated with Mark Riddick, and Mark was very kind and just blew me away and sent me a package of his 
latest Black Dahlia Murder uh, merch that he created for the band that he did in collaboration with Night Shift merch. Uh, this is actually available right now that you can go buy. He sent me a care package of this latest work that he did because he knew that I absolutely love the Black Dahlia Murder. So he reached out to me a couple months ago, unfortunately before Trevor's passing. So this kind of came at it like a pretty bittersweet time. I got the package this morning and just... It was hard to, to fight back the tears because it unfortunately just came at a time that was a sad time uh, in a time that all the fans are in mourning. Um, so if you're not familiar, this is currently on Night Shift merch. You can you can pre-order this. And in the back, it's got the Detroit D, the B. So Mark Riddick, thank you so much. Uh, I, again, was totally humbled by this package. I couldn't believe it. When I opened it, I thought I was just getting the t-shirt that you emailed me about. But he also threw in the awesome fanny pack as well, which I had gone back and forth about if I wanted to buy this because I'm not a fanny pack person, but I just love the artwork on it and actually could see myself using this. So uh, I was really pumped about that. And then there's also a hat with a big patch on it. Uh, so I'm not a hat person by any means. Uh, so this will probably just be propped up in the background going forward. Um, yeah, so thank you once again, Mark. This is a currently available on Night Shift Merch. You can go ahead and pre-order it. Um, I just couldn't believe that. I opened that package and I just was so stunned. Um, so let's talk about the music. Uh, let's talk about Trevor. Let's talk about all these things that everybody has been doing these last several weeks. I am incredibly late. I was waiting on... Uh, to have a better mindset to record this video um, and I feel more comfortable doing it now. So Trevor, uh, again, like I said, he's reached out to me a couple of times uh, just very briefly on Instagram saying, hey, I love your channel, I love what you're doing. We've talked back and forth uh, and it was definitely a fangirl moment the first time I ever saw it. He followed me on Instagram and he even uh, entered in a couple of my giveaways uh, back uh, last year and, and recently, which I thought was funny. Um, Sadly, he never won any of those, but I definitely reached out and was like, hey, if you want me to send you stuff, let me know. Uh, he also was very interactive on Twitter uh, and a funny guy. He had a great personality. Um, obviously, you know, we don't know the full details of his passing and that 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 really shouldn't be anybody's business, unfortunately. But the band, I believe, has made it uh, pretty apparent that it may have been to suicide since they posted the suicide prevention hotline in their post when they announced that he had passed. Um, and that's just, you know, heartbreaking. Uh, and Trevor had been very honest and very open about his mental uh, struggles that he had been having with depression and, and most recently his mother passing. Uh, he was on Rob Flynn's No Fucking Regrets podcast. He did a metal injection. I think it was metal injection. Not fest or I can't remember. Most recently, he went really in depth about you know, how he was treating his, his depression, his anxiety issues and stuff like that. So it's really sad. And, and a lot of people, you know, they go through these struggles daily and it's, you know, it's tough. Uh, unfortunately, he's not the first person that I have known that has committed suicide, if allegedly. Um, and it's, you know, mental health is a, a big issue here, uh, especially getting uh, resources that you need to help you having the, the funds to supply medication and stuff like that, health insurance. It's, it's all things that are incredibly infuriating. If you live in the U the U S uh, to get access to, um, and I don't want to get political, but it is an issue. So, um, mental health needs to be treated a lot more, uh, just, it needs to be a higher priority in this country and, and there's a lot of things that need to be done. Uh, so unfortunately with Trevor's passing, it sucks. It sucks. Like that's just, I, I have no other words other than saying that it sucks. So why not honor him uh, and talk about the amazing music that he's created? So back in 2003, uh, MySpace days, MySpace music was very, um, was huge. You know, I was really into the MySpace music section. Uh, that's where I found a lot of the new stuff that I listened to. Uh, and the Black Dahlia Murder was definitely one of those bands that I found on MySpace. I remember seeing this particular album trending on there. Trending was not really much of a word back then. Uh, and that logo particularly was what in piqued my interest. Um, 
and I immediately hated it the first time I heard this this album. I did not like this album by any means. Um, it was just a style of music I wasn't used to. I was listening to Autopsy. I was listening to Death. I was listening to uh, Cannibal Corpse, you know, bands like that. And this style of, of metal music was not something that I was too familiar with. So I had a hard time getting past his, his higher style of vocals. Um, and I was like, man, I don't understand why people are raving so much about this band. I'm just being honest with you guys. What happened next was what happens to a lot of a lot of bands that I listen to. There's there's a an evolution that happens where the hype, the the fear of missing out gets to you, and so I start to dive in a little bit more. This album has not been my favorite Black Dahlia Murder album for a very long time. Uh, I still I still don't love it to its full extent, but there's a lot of great moments on here that I absolutely love. Obviously, Funeral Thirst is, is one of my favorite songs on here. Um, Unhallowed, you know, the opening title track. Like, But again, when it comes to the Black Dahlia Murder discography, this is probably one that I don't grab a whole lot. But to this day, I will say I am thankful that I gave it a chance because when two years later comes uh, with Miasma, I was fully invested in this band already. So this album, it, it took me a while to get to, uh, to, to understand, to like. I mean, if you listen to it now, the sound quality, obviously, the vocal quality, it's not horrific by any means. Uh, but you know, it, you can tell that they're just getting solidified. They're just getting started. This is a very intro album, uh, but also iconic album. A lot of people love this album. There's There is a... A huge love affair for this album and I totally get it I totally get it because again now when I listen to it now when I listen to this album I, I have a love for it that I didn't back then so on Hollow came out in 2003 I was very invested into the MySpace scene and and, and that was when the love affair started uh, two years later in 2005 this particular album Miasma came out and this is what really really hit me on the head of hey oh my god I love this album I love this band I love their energy they are so fun live I just remember going and you know YouTube was starting to be a thing then looking up videos trying to find more about them I just knew they were from Michigan and so then this was when my love affair really started for them and Miasma has been to this day one of my favorite albums uh by the Black Dahlia Murder I mean, Statutory Ape is the iconic song on here, but again, so many good songs, and I still absolutely love this album. This was a grail album for me. When I first started collecting vinyl, The Black Dahlia Murder was uh, the discography that I was hunting first, uh, along with Death and Between the Barrier to Me and a couple of other death metal uh bands like obituary and stuff like that but this one was the one that was the hardest to get at the time because it was out of print i spent a lot of money and i got a first print black edition um and this one just sits on the shelf and i don't touch it because i spent so much money on it uh, and then they did go through and they did recently repress these several times since but at the time Repressings didn't happen as often, but it was a pretty big um, like fan request. So Metal Blade finally did it, uh, and they've been doing it recently. But most recently, I picked up this one. I got it for retail, and now I'm seeing it for resale. Incredibly stupid prices. I've showed this off on the collection update a while back when I got this. But this is the Metal Blade Anniversary that came in that box set. Uh, they started piecing these out and you could buy them separately, uh, which I did. This was the only one in that box set that I wanted because, again, I absolutely love this album. So I have two copies of this album now. Well, three if you count the CD. Uh, but, yeah, this was the first vinyl that I spent a lot of money on that I absolutely wanted. And, of course... Fuck me, they repressed it uh, a couple years later, but this was the one that I hunted that I, I, I found and I think I posted on, on Reddit and on Facebook and said, hey, if anybody has 
this on vinyl. This is the last one that I need. Please let me know. And of course, somebody reached out and they probably, you know, screwed me on the price. But whatever. I got it. So that was really the album that I credit to really fall in love with the Black Dahlia Murder. I, I think in terms of discography rankings, that's probably my number three album right now because the discography, in my opinion, their all of their albums are so strong. It's such a strong discography, and they've just gotten better over time. That eventually, like a you know, like a bumped down a little bit uh, because this next album that came out, Nocturnal, in two thousand seven then became my favorite Black Timer <laughs> album. Uh, this is one of the best metal, death metal albums in my collection. It's one of my all-time favorite albums, and I've credited this several times. Nocturnal is an iconic album, 2007 now. Like, you know, it's been several years since this band is out, and they're on their third full length, and it's our, they're already... An incredible iconic band. They haven't lost their luster whatsoever. And they've just they've just gotten they've just gotten better. Um, so again, if you're not familiar with this album, some of the most incredible songs in their discography. Everything went black. What a horrible night to have a curse. <laughs> like just everything. Nocturnal, Death Mass Divine, Of Darkness Spawn. Like Warborn is my absolute favorite song on this album. Uh, just truly an incredible album. Yes, I do have the vinyl. Uh, I don't know what version this is. I don't remember. Uh, but it might be a second press now that I think about it. Because when I started collecting these vinyls again, they had it. They had sold out the first press. This is this is the plain black version. And then the other version that I have is this recently repressed version. I think it came out like two or s two years or so ago where it's like, they called, they called it like a moon silver or something like that. So I do have multiple copies of, of Black Dahlia Murder albums just because, again, it's my favorite band. Uh, so I like to collect multiple copies. So Nocturnal comes out, and I'm just, my mind is blown again. This band has made an album that I've absolutely just loved. And this is when, you know, the fandom really, really started to pick up again now. Like, and, and I'm... I'm fully in and I'm like I need to see this band live so I go see them live for the first time ever and I believe oh I can't remember who was on it I remember not giving a shit about the other bands that were on the tour I see them live my face is kicked in I absolutely am just like this band is incredible I absolutely love them they're one of my favorite bands uh and if you think by now we're, we're three albums in and, and usually, you know, sometimes when bands keep pumping out albums, they're not the best. There's a couple of duds in, in, in the discography. And some people say that this is a dud. I 1,000% disagree because this, for a long time, has been my favorite Black Dahlia Murder album. The Floor 8 comes out in 2009. We've got the Tony Cole artwork, which I absolutely love. Um... And then this became my favorite Black Tie Murder album. You're seeing a trend here. Every time they released an album, I ended up loving it more than the previous ones. Uh, Black Valor is one of my all-time favorite Black Dahlia Murder songs. Uh, Necropolis is just top-notch. I Will Return is probably just one of the amazing songs. Like, there's so many amazing songs on here. But this album, for the longest time, was my all-time favorite Black Dahlia Murder album. I've got some two CD, two disc special DVD edition for the Digipack, uh, which I hate Digipacks, but they did this one well, and it's it's lasted over the years. It, it's in good condition, and then this was a Grail vinyl as well. I think this might actually be a second pressing because the first press sold out so fast. I don't know, but I know this is worth quite a bit of money because, and I've seen it sell for stupid prices on Discogs. It's this gold yellow gold variants um this has just still to this day one of the first albums that i take off the shelf and listen to uh still to this day after all these years you know it's 2007 it's been off for a while now um that i i still listen to it all the time i still get amped up when i hear it. black valor is probably one of the best 
album opening songs like I love that song so much that I've made my gamer tags and whatever else in any video game that I played that be my my screen name so some people don't like this album you know it's it's an ongoing joke that this is not their best album and whatever else some people strongly disagree with me but this has been always been one of my favorites uh I go back and forth between my number one album. It's either that or Nocturnal or this next one. Uh, <laughs> because again, this band, every time they released an album, ended up being my favorite so album in the discography. We've got two years later now. As you can see, every two years they're pumping out records. And they do that consistently. They do that consistently. Ritual comes out. And... My God, this album is so goddamn good. And like I said, these last three albums that I pumped out, I go back and forth. Like Nocturnal, The Floor uh, Ritual, are they my favorite albums? Uh, these are the three that I pump out, that I pull out a lot, and that I listen to a lot still to this day. This album is incredible. And yes, I do have it on vinyl. I've got a, a, like a green version, and then I think this is the half and half green, yellow. I don't, I'm not going to stop pulling this out because you don't, you don't care about the vinyl color so whew, this song uh the window is an incredible song and and all of these albums have these like horror nightmarish type theme songs trevor was a master of lyrics like he wrote incredible songs and this is no no different on this um I love this album so much that I got picked to be on Listener Domination on Sirius XM Liquid Metal. Uh, it was this, this spot that they did. I don't think they have it anymore. Actually, I don't think they do it anymore at all. Where you pretty much put a submission of the three songs that you would pick to play on the radio for that like 30-minute spotlight that you get to have. So you're the DJ for 30 minutes. And I picked Moonlight, Equilib Moonlight Equilibrium from this album. I picked... Self Bias Resistor from Fear Factory's The Manufacturer. And then I picked I Dementia. I think it was I Dementia from Whitechapel's latest album that had come out at that time. Whitechapel was another band that I was really getting into. Uh, and I, they picked me. They said, hey, we're going to have you on the show. So I was on the show. Um, I recently found the script that Sean the Butcher sent me. It was like, hey, you know, it kind of say similar, like talk about the song, like just kind of help me guide. Uh, so that way I wasn't nervous. And yeah. Moonlight Equilibrium was one of the songs I played, so I was very invested with this band, and I think this is around the time uh, that I started to get fully involved with the social media scene and was just hooked and following them and talking with people about them and meeting people online and stuff like that and trying to get more involved with this band. I just absolutely love this album. This album is incredible. I still, to this day, think it's one of their one of their best, like, again, I go back and forth between these last three, and just when you think there's going to be a sleeper, there's going to be an album that I don't enjoy, that, no, because now we are in 2013, almost 10 years from now, which is crazy, I can't believe this has been almost 10 years, um, Ever Black is being teased, and the artwork is incredible, and and I'm pumped. And this is when I create the Reddit subreddit page. And we're talking about it. And we're just getting so amped up. And they're releasing singles. And yes, this album is so good. And again, this album, I still listen to it all the time. And this is definitely one of my favorite albums. Like, these last four albums that come out, I'm just so pumped. Like, every single one of them are so good. And these are the four that I listen to all the time in hell where she waits for me is just an incredible album opener uh goat of departure is so good and they released a video for that and it was goofy as hell into the ever black gets stuck in my head like you would not believe raped in hatred uh by vines of thorn again another song that gets just stuck in my every single song on this album just flows perfectly together phantom masturbation phantom live masturbation is is funny it's a funny song um control brutal brutal song uh, Blood Mine, Every Rope of News, like everything on this album is so good. And I still absolutely love this album. Um, I spun the shit out of this album to the point where my, my vinyl is in really rough shape. This is a first press and I know this sells for stupid prices right now. It's this interesting, like, like, yeah, you can see, like, it's, it's gone, it's gone through the ringer here. I've listened to this 
a lot. It's this special trifold. Uh, there, it's just the, the purple marble. Uh, it's this trifold jacket here uh, that is very delicate because, again, it's been tortured. Um, very glossy. But this album, man, the, I just remember like just being so pumped for it. I, I pre-ordered it as soon as it was announced. Like I stayed up late and I got it. And when it was shipped, I just sat there and waited all day. Like, come on, drop this off. I want it. Uh, and of course I got it. And it's just probably one of my most cherished vinyls just for that time of what was going on in my life. And, and just came out. And I was so like a, a diehard fan at the time. I, mean, I still am. But I was just very, again, involved with Reddit and and getting involved with the social media aspect of this and there's a lot of nostalgia when it comes to this record i made a lot of a lot of awesome friends when this record came out and i still they're still some of my best friends uh and one of my all-time best friends his name is andrew if you're watching this uh we really really bonded over this album like we met and we really clicked and we met at a between the buried and me concert after getting to know each other through a mutual friend and we all went together and that album just you know it's one of those albums that you can talk about with somebody forever and we we clicked over it and just this album my credit uh for you know really creating some amazing memories in my life uh so it's the power of music and why it's amazing so two years go by 2015 now and i'm so thrown into death metal now like that is all i'm listening to that's all i'm buying and i'm getting into black metal and and they announced another, a new record. And of course, I was pumped for it. I could not wait. And this is what I would say when it first came out was probably my official first sleeper uh, in their discography. And I, I fully say at the time, it was because of what I was listening to. It just wasn't, I don't know, it didn't click with me right away. <laughs> um, but I can't say that now. Uh, this album is probably one of the harder ones <laughs> to talk about today. Uh, it's probably by far Trevor's most personal album that he wrote uh, to this day, to, to when it was being released. A lot of personal lyrics in here. Uh, Receipt is, is, if you look into the lyrics, it's, it's, it's a gut wrencher. It's hard to comprehend right now. It's very obviously where his mind was and, and just given the passing of him now. It's tough listen. The album is tough listen. And that album, of course, as I'm talking about abysmal. Uh, some of the most incredible artwork on here, um, I, to the point of where I bought Night Shift Merch's uh, mouse pad. If you're following me on, on Instagram, you can see that picture. Um, but So I do have the Digipack, which I keep in like the protective thing. I don't ever take it out. I probably just, I don't know. I don't do that with all my CDs. But for that one, and then, of course, the vinyl. I've got the, just the plain orange colored one. But there's that artwork I was talking about some incredible artwork and it's funny because the promotion for this album was so goofy like the the promotional images that they did uh like you just you don't think about the seriousness or the the powerful e emotional lyrics with this band because of how goofy and their their stage presence and all that uh and this the promotion for this album that metal blade did with the, the promotional videos and the pictures and stuff like that uh, you don't realize like the lyrics and the meanings around them. Um, so again, this album is very personal, I would say. Probably one of the more emotional, uh, emotionally vulnerable lyrics that Trevor, Trevor had written for the band, uh, at least in my opinion. Um, and this album has grown on me so much to the point where I would say... It's probably my favorite album at the moment. At the moment. Just for what I've been listening to. I listen to it now and I fucking love it. I think it's incredible. I think Receipt, yeah. Receipt's a great song. Um, what was that? Vlad the Son of Dragon was the other single. That was a good one. But the whole album is very, very good. And you got to give it a chance. So this is definitely the first official like sleeper in the discography where I didn't click when I first heard it. But now that years have gone by and... Every like I refused. I refused to say I didn't like it. I refused. I just couldn't do it. And I just said it was just okay. It's not my favorite. It's not a horrible album. And as years have gone by, I've probably listened to this album 
a hundred times and every single time it just got better and better and better and then within the most recent years it was the one that i pulled off a shelf first so there's been an evolution with this band uh, where their older albums were some of my all-time favorites and those were the only ones i listened to to now we're into the newer ones and i'm listening to these ones now i'm pulling these ones off first so you go through this evolution with your favorite bands and of course there's the old classics that you're going to go fall back into and that you're going to absolutely love but again there's something with this this evolution of this band that happens that i think a lot of people um had a hard time accepting but at the same time there's their sound didn't change or anything like that i just think that they were so hooked on so many of the older albums that they just wanted some of that and and black timers like we're we're not we're not doing that anymore. We're, we're going to progress and we're going to do these different types of music. And, and, and it's still, their sound is still there, but it's, you know, it's different. It's hard to explain. But that album has grown on me so much that I absolutely love it now. Um, but a change happens with this band. Uh, the members starting to change for the first time. Like Shannon Lucas leaves, Ryan Knight leaves, uh, their drummer and their guitarist. And now we've get, we get Alan Cassidy in, who's incredible, incredible drummer. And then we've get uh, Brandon Ellis on guitar and this next album comes out and it's Nightbringers and Brandon Ellis brings uh an element to this band a guitar element to this band that works they blended in so good with like they just molded so well with this band and this music and just their play styles are perfect and this album is I feel like one of their more underrated albums people don't credit this album as being as good as it is i think this album is fantastic it comes comes out in 2017 i'm trying to remember what else came out that year because a lot of a lot of stuff came out there um and i think this album is yes probably my one of my least favorite albums in, in regards to all the other albums but that's not to say it's bad but i also think it's completely underrated i think more people should give it more of a chance it's heavy there's a lot of heavy riffs on this. Like Brandon Ellis is a phenomenal guitar player. And I think it's totally underrated. So listen to this album. Tell me what you think. And I love the artwork. That red and black artwork is incredible. Um, so I do have this this really nice digipack, by the way. Really nice. Good job, Metal Blade. Um, folds out into this like four panel -ness. Uh, and it's got all the lyrics and stuff like that. And, you know, that's a great way to make a digipack. I'm not, cause I'm not a fan of these and we've talked about it several times on this channel. Uh, but I got that. And then I have just the plain black first press Nightbringers. Um, I think I didn't pull the trigger fast enough to get another one. Uh, but yeah, again, I've got more than one format uh, and I listened to this album today. And again, I think it's one of the more underrated albums by the Black Dahlia Murder. Um, it's a great album. <laughs> It really, really is. There's some amazing melodic uh, death metal riffs in here. Death metal guitar riffs in here. Uh, so definitely check this out. Like the first the first two songs, if you're not hooked, like just keep trying. Because I think it'll eventually click with you. Uh, so they haven't lost their luster. And then their latest album comes out, which was in 2020. So we're going on almost two years now. And I know that they at least... I remember seeing that they had or they were recording or writing a new album so that makes me you know a little bit emotional i hope that they release it it'd be nice to have it but again i i also will not be upset with what the band decides to do and that is verminous and i think verminous was probably the one album that i was not too excited about and i think i credit this for being pandemic depressed um and just really getting more involved with a lot of other different styles of music. And we are on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is our ninth full length. Like that's a lot of albums. Um, so, but I did pre-order it as soon as it was announced through Night Shift. I was super pumped. Of course, I was excited. But in terms of like the overall like excitement that I had for previous records and maybe because I'm older now, like when they first came out, I was a lot younger. Um, I didn't listen to it when I got it. I listened to it once and I put it into the shelf of back there and was just going through and listening to so many other music, so much other music. And this is when I started to get a lot bigger on Instagram and, and 
And I kind of hate myself for that. Like I kind of kicked myself a little bit for it. I was like, man, this has been one of my all time favorite bands for such a long time. Like I've been such a dedicated fan. Like what the hell is wrong with me? And, and we've got Lucas Court's artwork is in here. And I, and, you know, I've been following him on Instagram and I love his artwork. Like, come on, man, this is one of your favorite bands. And so finally, finally last year, a year later, I told myself, you know, after I met Trevor online for the first time and I told myself I'm going to listen to this album. I'm going to do it. And I love it. It's such a good album. It's definitely a lot different sounding than their last ones. But I think in terms of his vocals and, and the way the band plays, like there's a there's an evolution there. There's a maturity that there wasn't on other records. And I think, you know, where they were moving, where they were shifting into, uh, I got excited. I think it's an incredible album. Um, and I would say in regards to on the discography uh you know it's probably one of the lower ranked ones but again that's not to discredit how incredible it is and i don't remember what color it was silver or whatever they made so many variants i've got the first splatter edition too i bought more than one variant at the time um but yeah it's got this really cool like uv-ness on the cover i don't know i hope the camera can capture it uh it's like a glossy neon green in the river flowing so yeah this is a really good album and they they had some pretty cool promotion there's a lot of extra stuff that they added for this look at that um and i again i just wish i had was in a better mindset and i don't know why i like kick myself for it but this is a very very good melodic death metal record um and it's, it's got some emotional parts. And again, Brandon Ellis is an incredible guitarist. I think he's totally underrated. Please listen to the man. Go follow him on Instagram. Listen to his guitars. He's an incredible guitarist. And he's got an awesome signature guitar out too, which I kind of want it. <laughs> I might actually buy it. It's got that crack, that green crackle uh, paint on it. So, it, godlessly, I think... Whoop, drop my phone godlessly is probably my favorite song on that record um but again it's got a lot of other good songs like dawn of the rest of last song a womb of dark crystal crystal is a camera where rooms feast like a lot of this these songs are really good sunless empire is an amazing song i love that song there's a lot of uh instrumentational differences on this album i think it's it's very good it's a very good record um yeah, it's the final record with Trevor. Uh, so I think there's a little bit of a sadness that comes with it, too. So I don't know what the band is doing in the future, obviously. I don't think anybody does, except for maybe people who are close to them. And it's still too fresh. It's, it's only been like three weeks. Come on. Uh, but it's hard to imagine a band without Trevor. I would say that. But at the same time, it's hard to imagine my life without the Black Dahlia murder. Uh, so it's weird to think that this could possibly be their final album. I don't know. I don't like thinking about it, but I also don't like thinking about the band without him in it, but respect the band for what they decide to do, um, and respect the band for what they're going through right now and give them time to think about it. Uh, bands do this. They go through this. Unfortunately, um, they go through these painful situations uh power trip most recently i think is the one that we're all thinking about right now and i know that they're about to tease some new stuff coming up and I'm glad i'm glad they're moving on and they're doing what they should do because you know i think that's what riley probably would have wanted them to and it's probably maybe what trevor will want them i don't know i don't know them personally i don't want to put words in them assume that that was said um but i love this band so much i just wanted to get on a camera and talk about them uh, this is like a, a morning thing for me, a morning process that I wanted to do. A lot of people have done these videos as well and they've ranked their discographies. I'm going to just say it just because it has been for a long time. Deflorate is probably still my favorite Black Dahlia Murder album along with Nocturnal and uh, Ritual and Ever Black. Um, but those have always been my favorites, but I love Miasma. I still love Unhallowed. I still love Nightbringers. I love Abysmal. I love Abysmal. Verminous, like they're all great albums. Uh, and that's pretty much what all I've been listening to lately. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Like just been binging the Black Diamond. It's been hard to listen to other stuff. It's also been hard to listen to them. There's a lot of emotion that comes with it, but they make me happy. They've always made me happy. And your favorite band should always make you happy. Uh, and there's a band that does that to me. So, um, yeah. Trevor is going to be 
greatly missed. Uh, it's it's going to be sad. It, it is sad. It's sad. I don't really know what else to say. So that's all that I had today, guys. Um, I'm going to announce the winner of my 2K giveaway tomorrow. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, you can go and enter if you haven't watched it yet. Uh, and I might take a break for the rest of the week. I'm making videos. I don't know. We'll see. So trying to process this. It's been it's been a bummer. It's definitely put me in a little bit of a funk, uh, but it's also made me really think about a lot of things in regards to my own personal life and, and stuff that I've been struggling with and, and I need to be better about. Um, so it's been a time of reflection as well. So rest in peace, Trevor. You definitely made a big impact on a lot of people's lives, uh, whether you knew that or not. Um, it is a shame that we have a world without you now, but your legacy obviously is going to live on forever, especially if from the fans that have loved you from the very beginning. So take care of yourselves, everybody. Uh, and please do not hesitate to reach out if you need anything, including to me. If you need somebody to talk to, I will always be here and help out, even though we don't know each other. Uh, there's a humanity side that everybody should really tap into. And that is, you know, it doesn't matter if you know somebody, if they need help, they need help. You should help them. So take care of yourselves and I will see you in the next one.